Hey everybody, Jeff Reinhardt here, LMP and Lancaster Online, LL League Football 2023, here we go. Week one, uh, first edition of LL Football Roundtable, brought to you by Auto House of Lancaster, new sponsor this season, thank you for that. Here we are at Cocalico in beautiful Denver, home of the Eagles, who will open defense of their District 3 Class 5A Championship on Friday with a really cool local Lancaster County game. Cocalico will gas up the bus and over to uh, head over to Warwick to take on the Warriors. That'll be a lot of fun. Warwick will be playing in their new refurbished stadium. Anxious to get over there and take a look at that. Okay, let's do some interviews. First up, one of Cocalico's really gritty defensive kids coming back from last year's district championship team. He's Owen Weaver. How's your summer football? You ready? Oh yeah. 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 I'm excited. Okay, you should be. I can't believe it's here. How quick? How quick did it go? It seems like you were just in Altoona playing in the state semifinals and now we're back out here in the summer and you're teeing up for week one how quickly yeah. did this go i mean ever since we played that game i've been ready to get back at it i mean just all summer ready for it so we're excited you should be yeah. 21 seniors and a lot of starters back yep. how did that affect like summer drills because you guys know the plays you know each other you know the coaches yep. how much did that help that camaraderie and knowing each other and kind of knowing the drills and, and what you're doing here? Uh, it really helped with the scout team. Uh, just iron sharpens iron, get the best people on scout team, really helps the offense, helps the defense, just makes the best team possible. They're hitting you with the schedule here early. You got Warwick, you got Salenko, you got Mannheim Central out of the shoot. Let's start with Warwick. They're kind of right next door, kind of an old backyard rival. You know them a little bit. Played them in the district uh, playoffs a couple years ago when you were a kid. Uh, give us uh, give us your Warwick scouting report. I know nobody's played yet, but you guys have film from last year. You know Warwick a little bit. What are you looking for here Friday with them? Uh, they definitely they have some athletes, but yet again, we have athletes too. I mean but it's going to be tough. I mean, it's not going to be a walk in the park. It's always a tough game with them. After last year, how anxious are you guys to get on the field, on the field again? I mean, the scrimmage was probably, oh, okay, fun, but to get back on the field after what you accomplished, you guys must be itching for Friday. Yeah, we're. I'm excited. I think everybody else is excited. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's football. It's fun. After the scrimmage, that was, just, that was a little taste, you know, but I, I like the whole thing, you know. I'm, I'm excited for Friday. And we are back from the live report from Cocalico. Thanks to those folks and to the Rhines for providing that. And uh, this is, folks, the first edition for 2023 of the LL High School Sports Roundtable. This time of year, it's the Football Roundtable. And uh, we're going to give you a preview of week one of the season, which Ooh. is a massive <laughs> schedule yeah. because of our 37-team league. Uh, a little preview of the section races, a little preview of week one, a little overview, and some other notes and things to watch. My name is Mike Gross. I'll be hosting these proceedings. And to my right is, he's been the high school football beat writer for LNP Lancaster Online for, I believe it's uh, 67 years. <laughs> Seems like it. Something like that. This is he's your 30. This is your 30 for me. Wow. 3 wow. 0. Wow. He's, uh, wow. he's seasoned. That's what we're going to say. He's to the rise of season. And to my left is uh, Jason Guarante, who is also going to be covering high school football and many other things for our publications throughout the school year. So uh, we have, we're going to look at the section races first. Mm -hmm. Let's go, Jeffrey, to yes. session, section one. Okay. And talk a little bit about that. Okay. Mannheim Township's really good. Yeah. Yeah. We'll start there. I think they're there. probably the favorite. Yeah. I picked Township. And you picked them. Yeah. They're, they're going to be really good they got the whole crew back Hayden Johnson's back at quarterback he'll hit 5,000 passing yards here very quickly if not this week next week he's going to Lehigh um, Kendall's back to catch passes he's going to Monmouth Clancy's back to run the ball and make tackles a couple guys up front are back swarming really good defensive guys coming back township stacked I like them a lot Wilson will be there in week 10. They have some injuries here at the outset, but they'll have enough. It's Wilson. If Township can block, if they can win in the line of scrimmage against good people, they could be playing. Yes, and they a play a great non-league. They play they Cumberland Valley. They play Harrisburg. They play Springford. Township will be chiseled and ready to go. 
Um, we talk and, about yeah. Township and Wilson all the time. Yes. But the defending champion in is this section is Hemfield. Hemfield, which was a surprise last season. Yeah, a little bit. They were, they I think were. the difference is it. They're everyone's ready for him now. They mm-hmm. won that game against uh, Township at Neffsville. It was a real nail biter, and that sort of springboarded them yeah. to an undefeated uh, section record and the top seed in District Three. Yes. But they they have this rare place where they're the defending champs, yet probably still the underdog, which you don't get to be very often. Yeah, yeah, that's true, and especially because it's not like they've got they've got wiped out. I mean, they lost a lot. They did they, defensively. They, they, they yeah. lost some kids, and they yes. have they have one of the most Fun to watch defensive tackles, maybe in the in the history of the league, uh, Jason. Uh, David Polly Polly, yeah. which I think we're in this uh, age where star players are leaving. They're going to other schools. They're not staying with their public yeah. schools, and he That's chose true. to stay. He had a chance to go somewhere else, and I and think considered it and considered yeah, it. Did. But I think the pull of his friends in Landisville, the connections he made, kept him here, and I think. He'll have a rewarding season just from that standpoint, no matter how it goes for the Black Knights. Yeah, going point. to USC and uh, uh, what, a, what a player. And also a guy who's not just a road grader. He's a nose for the football guy, playmaker, yeah. does does stuff. He, he's fun. So he's, uh, he's uh, maybe the single uh, guy to watch for football yeah. aficionado. I think he's the face of the league this year, probably. Yeah. Might be. If you had to pick a kid that you do not want to miss, it's Pali Pali. All right. Section... Two. Deuce, Manheim Central, look out. Bryson Armold, 2,000 yard rusher. Zach Hahn, 2,000 yard passer. Athlete extraordinaire, Aaron Enterline. Bodie Seipel, D back of the year in section two. Xander Kolk, who Jason's writing about for this week. Central's loaded. I can't believe wow. Enderline isn't hasn't gotten more recruiting oh, interest. Did you see him at Media Day? Yeah. He is ripped and I mean, just looks a, like an athlete. That's almost a freakish level athlete. Yep. And, He's pretty and amazing. Size and, anyway. Yeah, Central. I put bullseye on Central. Exeter lost some guys. Schlaffer, obviously, who's at Penn State. And some real good linemen, D tackle, linebacker types. Yeah. Yeah. I think they'll still be there. They'll still I don't be think good, they're going, but yeah. on paper, they're not like, I don't know, obviously yeah. loaded. Yeah. I don't know if they go 12-0 and 0 again, yeah. but Central playing a great schedule. They'll be in Delaware next week to play Smyrna. Delaware, the, Smyrna. Defen- the defending state champ in Delaware. We'll get to that next week. But Barons just have a ton back, and they're going to be really good. I believe Smyrna was named by Jerry Lewis. Smyrna. There you uh, go. So anyway, it looks like... It looks like um, Barons. It looks like the, it looks like Barons. Let's talk about Section Three a little bit. Yeah. Now, Ryan's go yeah. ahead and tell us who do you think the favorite is. Uh, I took Garden Spot, but I think it's kind of a coin toss with Garden Spot and Twin Valley. Yeah. Actually, I think yeah. they're going to be really good. Twin Valley is huge up front. They average like 280 pounds per lineman with some really good skill kids back. But I, I circled Garden Spot. Kai Harding, the quarterback, thousand yard passer, thousand yard rusher, 33 touchdowns. Couple of good line kids and tack, tackle kids on defense. They'll need a new feature running back, but I think Garden Spot has a favorable home schedule. They're going to get all the other contenders at home. Now you, you do, know Garden you Spot the Garden too. Spot preview, Jason. Yeah. What do you what do you, what got do you like about that? What do you got in the sport? To add to what the Rhines are yeah. really almost two thousand yards passing. Missed it by ten. A thirty. Yeah. Thirty. Nineteen. So close. Seven. Yeah. And how many? Eleven uh, quarterbacks have gone a thousand, a thousand. But how yeah. many have come back for their senior year? I'd have to look. Yeah. Yeah. So he, one kid did it twice. Another kid did it twice. He Maybe has an excellent kids. chance to do it twice and be yeah. even better. And yeah. when you you add a year of experience, more strength, mm-hmm. and most of their lines back. So, um, you know, they're going to be able to protect him, and he's going to be able to do some things. Yeah, so it like looks that. like Twin Valley and Garden Spot in, in that league, and our, our buddy Drago is really high on Twin Valley. Yes, they is. play uh, week one, yes. Schuylkill Valley, yes. who was good last year. Yes, Bruce Harbach. Uh, Bruce Harbach team. at the helm. That's at, at Twin, Twin Valley. Valley. That could be some points in that one. That's a yeah. great opener. Yeah. yeah. Section four. Section four, why I'm missing. Um, you look at their players' loss list, you know, Jevin Williams, you know, and a bunch of other, like, all-state kids. But, yep. my gosh, then you yep. look at the key players back, and it's just one after another after another after another. They are loaded right now at Y.O. Yeah, they have a lot of skill loaded. position guys who maybe are not, like, you know, Penn State-level recruits, but they have a lot of them. They have a system where those dudes really thrive. Yep, wing T. Yeah. Uh, Caleb Brewer, Penn State. 
Ben come State in, commit. Yep. up front to anchor the line. Yep. Riker Jones, Princeton commit, yep. linebacker running back, has a knee, but he'll be back probably in September range. Yep. They'll be okay without him. Three road games to start, including Trinity in week three, and Trinity's really good. But Wyo is just terrific. Cocalico will be there as well. We were there this week. Yep. Tons back for Cocalico, skill kids all over the place. Circle it, I don't have the week in front of me, but Y.O. at Cocalico later on should be a war. So two um, two district champions in, in that, that section. section. Yeah. Y.O. Yeah. and Cocalico. And the run that Cocalico made last year was really a remarkable. A three and remarkable. four to winning seven straight and going to the state semis. Fabulous. Section five. Jason, you want to take ch- section five? Buddy? Who do you like there? <laughs> I'll leave that to Ryan Hart to make Ryan, the Ryan, okay. five. What do you think? I circled Lancaster Catholic. They went 10-0 and last year, and they have some really good kids back. Elijah Cunningham, 1,000-yard rusher. Acker, Gonzalez, Warren, um, Crawley. They have a lot of kids back that yeah, know what they're doing. Yeah, and I don't think there's doing. anybody else in that section who you look at and say, maybe they're ready. Maybe they're really ready. So Schoolkill think- Valley, maybe. That's, yeah. that's week well, 10. Well, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. They have Dominic Jaffray, who rushed for 1,500 last year, and he's terrific. But didn't they lose some people, though? They lost some people, but not a whole so lot. So they're okay. They're, right. Yeah, they're going right. to be good, and that's, yeah. and that's at Catholic in week 10. Harbach comes back to Lancaster. Ooh, That'll be great. Uh, Hamburg, Hamburg should be good again. They lose the quarterback and a thousand yard rusher, but they still have enough to be there. Anvil Cleona, wow. They got some guys back in the trenches. New quarterback, but I think they'll be good because of that veer that they run. They're tough to prepare for. Um, that should be a great race. Section five should be a lot of fun. We only have 28 games week one. Only. So, you know, only. we're going to cruise through this late. No, we're not going to talk about all 28. No. We're not even going to come close to doing that eh. because, you know, we'd be in a coma by then, by the time we got through that. But let's take a couple of games. Uh, one of them is uh, Cumberland Valley at Township, which is the one I'm going to be doing. Uh, on Friday, uh, we'll talk a little bit about that. Cumula Valley seven and four last year. Mm-hmm. They won at home against Township Week One. Mm-hmm. Township threw the ball very effectively. I thought that was a winnable game. I thought they should have won the game, mm-hmm. and they did. Re- they did beat them in the district playoffs. Yep. Uh, so this is it, 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 a similar matchup in general terms, but I think maybe Township has a little more coming back, a oh, little yeah. more in the cupboard, and. Um, this is a good, t- still, this is a good test for Township, oh, yeah. especially in terms of that thing we were talking about, how they're going to fit, how they're going to fare up front. Yeah. So that's a good, it's a good, uh, in terms of programs, it's a really good match. You mentioned how well Township threw the ball in that, in the opener last year. Yeah. Fun stat of the week. In two games against Cumberland Valley last year, Hayden Johnson was 47 for 57. For 640 yards, it's not bad. And six touchdowns, yeah. 47 for 57. Yeah, but and but that's part great. of that wow. is part of that is that's a little bit of a double-edged sword because they couldn't run it. Yeah, true. They their threw short 50, passing game was yeah. their running yeah. game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's that's right. Good point. Their short passing game was their running game, mm-hmm. but you know, still pretty impressive. Yeah, I think this is a uh, even though Township's really good and they were in the district final, I think this is a uh, kind of a statement game. Like, hey. We need to beat another another good 6A district team. Especially at home. At home with yeah. all the bullseyes on us. So Is, yeah. Isn't it great that teams test themselves out of the gates like this? Yeah, it, it they certainly do it every year. Yeah. Yeah. Great it schedule. Every year. And a yeah, lot of these Township's teams are. Yeah, that's schedule. true. Yeah, and that's... I think Township next year is playing uh, State College. <laughs> and they're loaded. They're like they're a state ranked team. Yeah, yeah, they're expected to be good. And they're usually good. Yeah, yeah. That's Township a, that's always a good, plays yeah, a good yeah, schedule. Which, remember, is in the mid-pan. They are for football. Okay, the next one we're going to talk about, local rivalry, Cocalico, Warwick. I'll be there. Go get them. I'm going to Lidditz. I'm anxious to see the refurbished stadium over at Warwick. It certainly took them a while to get it all done. The construction of which screwed up their entire year. They had eight road games last year. Seven home games this year for Warwick. Trevor Evans, new QB for Warwick. I'll have my eyes on him. Cocalico was mentioned, and at the top of the video, Cocalico is really (laughs) just... Epinette and Longenecker and Nash and Meyer and Steffi. They just have so many skill kids. They'll be good up front and they'll tackle. That should be a fun game. Good backyard rivalry kind of game. 
winter get some good mow moving forward. Yeah, with Cocalico, maybe a little bit. This run in the postseason last year was maybe a little bit premature. Like maybe this is, this is almost yeah. the year. Uh, you know, yep. they should be very good. Should they got a game. month worth of games that people didn't expect them to get. So yeah. they're, they're going to be ahead of Yep, uh, Stroll mentions yeah. that a lot. He said, we got to practice into December, which is huge. People are like, practice? I'm talking about practice? Practice, man. But those kids got to be together for 15 weeks yeah. and go up against each other every day. I mean, that's that's huge. And, and it that wasn't like them. they were sick of each other at the end of 15 oh. weeks. It was like the great, the best stuff is happening. Yeah, right who's right. next? Yeah, yeah that was yeah, their attitude. Right. That's right. Okay, one more game with uh, with a trophy. Yes. Attached. Yes. Lamp Peter Strasburg at Solanko. Milk jug. Milk. Have you guys seen the milk jug? Uh, milk jug. Uh, it's a milk jug. You don't like, really have to say anything else. Milk jug. That's usually Two what I write. Words. Milk jug. Not yeah. said. It's a big milk jug off a farm in Southern Lancaster County. This is like the. This is very like the Big Ten because there's like oh, six yeah. of these in the Big Ten. Yeah. This isn't like the land. Grant Trophy there's is that a, the one that's really ugly? No, that's that doesn't even. I'm not even counting that one. But there's a there is a uh, little brown jug. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, this one's always Which fun. Could be filled with milk. You don't know. Exactly. Yeah, backyard, backyard, good backyard. Uh, good backyard Gatorade. rivalry. Um, Salenko won it last year, 40 to 35, to snap a three-year losing streak. LS still leads the series nine to four, I think. I like what LS has coming back. Trent Wagner, you've seen him, the quarterback, dual threat kid. Uh, they're going to tackle. They got some good defensive kids coming back. Salanco lost all those seniors. Yeah, they lost a lot. Wow. Salanco lost a lot. You wrote about some Salanco kids yeah. in the preseason. The what, only what did you take away? The lineman was really Gavin Cox, who was the center and the coach's Coach son. son but, yeah. Yep. This that week one was when Salanco sort of showed that they were yeah. they were here, right? And then yes. they run the table. They go ten and zero in the regular season. Yep. It could be the springboard game. Definitely for them, was but, for them. We knew yeah. last year going in, Salanco was going to be pretty tough. And then they beat yeah, but, a really but, good but LS Jesus, team. Right. This was a, yeah. That was a, a, a message. Yeah. Oh, definitely yeah. was. And they kept it up all the way. 11-0 start for them. That's always a fun game. Milk Jug, Coryville, be there. Okay, let's quickly talk about the, the Big 33 game is moving. Right? Yeah, we saw that. That uh, came across which, on it's Monday. It kind of came out of the blue just the other day. Yeah. They, they emailed everybody and said. Third site in three years. Yeah. It was at Landis Field in Harrisburg, Central Dolphin. Then last year, was it Rocco Ortenzio at Bishop McDevitt, which I thought was a great site. Nice, new, cool right. stadium at McDevitt. Now they're going to Cumberland Valley. Which is the site of the state finals. Which uh, makes uh, sense, I guess. But, yeah, but it keeps you know, bouncing around a little bit. It seemed, it seemed inadequate for the state finals. It's certainly from, from our standpoint from a media of covering standpoint, it. it yeah. So, yeah. so next spring uh, in May, the East-West games will be there. And then the following week, the Big 33 will be there. Has the Big 33 lost its panache a yes. little bit? Yeah. Why do you think that is? You've been well, doing this mostly, forever. Mo the, the biggest reason is that blue chip players are in college already. They don't go. Yeah, the, the, yeah. the, the senior class from from the previous season is yeah. all in college. That's the biggest reason. Yeah. 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 yeah, you're probably right. All right, that's it. Where are we going to be on Friday night? Jason Guarante. Dallas Town at Hempfield, the defending Section 1 champs. Try to get off to a fast start. Try to show everyone they're still uh, right there with the big dogs in the section. And it's okay if the answer to this question is absolutely not, but do you know anything about Dallas Town? I do not. There you go. He's honest. Yeah, He's honest. I don't either. I didn't do a lot of Dallas Town homework this <laughs> yeah, week. I, I did not. I'm sorry, doing, Wildcats. Come on, suck uh, it up, Brian. I know. All right, lit it's bound. Uh, Cocalico at Warwick. Get a chance yeah. to see Cocalico early, defending district champs. See what Warwick's made of, see how they're going to stack up, because Section 2 should be fun. Cool local game, Eagles-Warriors. And going? I will be at uh, Township for Cumberland Valley at Township on Friday night, which we've already talked about should be a good Fabulous. one. So that's about it, gang. Week yep. 1 is coming. Football's coming. We'll be here every week to talk about it. For Jeff Reinhardt, for Jason Guarente, and for Auto House of Lancaster, I'm Mike Gross. See you later. <laughs>